What is undeposited funds? Why is it in QuickBooks and how does it work? This is one of the biggest points of confusion that I see with QuickBooks users. I'm AJ Stockwell. I know it's been over a year since I have posted a YouTube video, but I'm back and I'm planning to start posting more of these QuickBooks how-to videos. To make sure you don't miss any of my videos, make sure that you are subscribed and hit the bell notification icon to get alerts when I post a new video. Like I said, this video is all about the undeposited funds account in QuickBooks, and I'm gonna be showing it in QuickBooks Online, but the same exact principles apply for QuickBooks Desktop. I'm gonna talk about what that account is, I'm gonna talk about why it's there, because I think that that's an important piece of education is to help you understand why it's there. And then I'm gonna show you the common ways that people use it incorrectly and actually mess up their books pretty badly. This is one of the most common areas of QuickBooks that people mess up and it leads to messed up books that can cause an expensive headache come tax time. So let's jump over to QuickBooks Online and I'm using kind of a demo account that I have set up for my training course and these training videos. And let's go look at our balance sheet. So we go to reports and then we go to balance sheet and we see undeposited funds. And what is that, what does that mean? So undeposited funds literally is funds that you have received but not yet put into the bank account. So it's an intermediate account where you're saying maybe a customer has mailed you a check and you have the check in your possession, but you have not yet deposited it into the bank. And I know a lot of people do not like this account. They say, well, I, I deposit checks right away, so why don't I just indicate that I got the check and it's going straight into the bank account? And the reason is that this might not always be the case. Another example is for credit card transactions. Maybe you have credit card sales and those funds don't get deposited for a couple of days. Why does this matter? Let's say that you get a big check from a customer that you haven't deposited yet or a big credit card sale and you just record it as going straight to the bank account. So QuickBooks in your bank account balance, say, I know right now this is negative, but say we received a $10,000 payment and we recorded it as going straight into the bank account even though we hadn't yet actually deposited the check. Now when we're looking at QuickBooks we might think that our bank account balance is actually $10,000 higher than it is and maybe we go you know send an e-check or even send out a paper check or do some kind of transaction where we're counting on that $10,000 being in there. This could result in overdrafting and, and your account going negative, incurring penalties, fees, maybe even bouncing a check, which doesn't go well with vendors, I can tell you that. And it, it just becomes a big headache. So the undeposited funds account exists to acknowledge that, yes, I've received this payment from the customer, but I have not yet deposited it into the bank account. So where do we see these amounts? This 2300, what is that from? Well, if we go to new transaction and choose bank deposit, what we see here is these two payments that we have recorded as being received, this $1,000 and $1,300 to give us that balance. And those come from payments that we receive against a customer invoice. So I can click one of them and we see that we had invoiced Climb CFO, that's my consulting firm. We see that we invoiced them for $1,000 and now we are recording the payment of it. And obviously I'm recording this video in September and this payment was recorded in April. So that's honestly something that we wanna look out for. We wanna see if we have old payments in here that have not yet been deposited. But what we can do to move that into the bank account is we do new deposit, we select it, we record the date that it was deposited, and we just save and close. 
So now you see undeposited funds is $1,000 lower and the bank account balance is $1,000 higher. Now, where do people go wrong with undeposited funds? I'm gonna go back to the transaction that I just posted. And if we go to the magnifying glass search icon, we see recent transactions. And I'm gonna delete this deposit that I just recorded. Now we still have the 2300 in undeposited funds. One of the biggest issues here and one of the ways that people really go wrong is when they are recording a deposit and they don't actually select the payment. So let's say that we know we recorded the $1,000 and we go to bank deposit and then we say, you know, this was from Climb CFO. And what a lot of people will do is just choose the income account and set the amount. So now we're saying, you know, we're depositing $1,000 and we can save and close. Now we've shown that we deposited that $1,000, but undeposited funds is still 2,300. And if we go to the new transaction and bank deposit, we still have it listed here. Sometimes I've seen people just completely ignore undeposited funds and they manually record payments that way. The other way that they'll do it is by posting directly to accounts receivable. And let's see the effect that this has. So the logic here is, you know, this was accounts receivable, this was a payment, and we're recording it as being deposited now because it wasn't recorded as deposited. We didn't see it in our bank account activity, maybe because, you know, maybe we're doing our bank reconciliation and the deposit was missing. So we just post it against accounts receivable. QuickBooks didn't even give us a warning that that isn't the right way to be posting against accounts receivable. And now what we see is accounts receivable is negative. If we go to our accounts receivable aging, we see Climb CFO has a negative $1,000 balance. So that means a credit balance of $1,000. That's because we had already recorded their payment. Now, there's actually something worse than this $1,000 credit balance that we just posted. And that's the first mistake that I had shown you. So if we go to our profit and loss, so this is for the year to date, and we see we have 3,300 recorded, but look at this. Here's $1,000 of income. And then you remember we have that other $1,300 payment that wasn't recorded. That brings us to our $2,300 of payments. And look at this, this is the deposit that I recorded directly to revenue. Now, what this means is that we're overstating our income by $1,000 and come tax time, we could potentially pay tax. You know, if, if our tax accountant doesn't catch this, if we don't realize that we've mistakenly posted directly to the income account, we are duplicating this income and we are overstating our income. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to delete this item that was posting directly to revenue. And now we see our revenue is corrected to 2300. I'm going to delete the transaction that was posting directly to accounts receivable. So I'll delete that. And then if we go look at our accounts receivable aging, we see that Climb CFO no longer has that $1,000 balance. And then going back to the balance sheet, let's go ahead and clear out both of these deposits. So I'm gonna select both of them. The assumption here is that we're depositing them at the same time, maybe with the same deposit slip, and we save and close. 
And now the only change that we see is undeposited funds went to zero and the checking account went up $2,300. That is the correct way that recording a deposit of a payment that you've said is received should affect the balance sheet. Did I say that right? I think so. So once again, undeposited funds is just a holding account. It's, it's in the middle of we've received a payment from a customer, but it has not yet been deposited to the bank account. And we see that as we go to receive a payment from a customer and we have this deposit to account. This indicates that the payment amount is going into undeposited funds. How do we make sure that we aren't misusing undeposited funds? Or how do we make sure that our bookkeeper is properly recording payments being deposited? The way to do that is on, I would recommend maybe a weekly basis if you have a lot of customer payments coming through, but certainly at least on a monthly basis, go to the bank deposit and see if there's anything listed here. Because once again, remember what I was saying at the beginning, let me go ahead and delete the deposit that I just recorded. A good way to check, and this is a good internal control to make sure you know that customer payments aren't disappearing, especially if you're a company that deals with any kind of cash, you come in here and see, okay, we got this customer's payment, but it hasn't been recorded as deposited. And this was all the way back in April. So why is that payment not recorded as deposited? And then maybe you go back through your bank statements, see if it actually was deposited, and maybe find that someone had duplicated revenue, or you know, a worse case scenario is that it never actually was deposited, and then you wanna to try to track down that check or cash. And for this reason, that type of internal control and keeping an eye on payments and how they're flowing through the system and flowing through your business, this is why I actually really like the undeposited funds account. I know a lot of people hate it. I think that's mostly because it's misunderstood. But if you know how to use it, if you know how to properly record your customer payments as being deposited, I think it'll grow on you. That's all I've got for this video. If you found it helpful, please hit that thumbs up like button. That'll help more people find it. And like I said, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss another video. And if you're looking for a full QuickBooks Online course, you can find that over at my site, learnbookkeepingtoday.com. And I'm starting to offer some QuickBooks consulting services. So if you actually need direct help with your QuickBooks Online file, then you can email me at aj at learnbookkeepingtoday.com. Thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to being back here on YouTube.